Oh no, not the books again. Oh, so tiresome. All that stuff I have to decide about. Oh well. Well, where did he go? Where is he? There he is. Yes, but no, I'm not going to torture you with more of this view. Instead, we're going on Expedition Sunday morning, the Swick Expedition to save the program. Here's the view out the kitchen window just after having had breakfast. Autumn is on its way. There's the view across the street at the beautiful church from around 18, 1800. And uh, they hold concerts there and stuff too. And there's our lovely park. We think of it as our backyard. And over there, across the trees to the university library and a bunch of other buildings. And we're surrounded by both old and new, ultra modern, but also very old buildings. All those used to be the regional hospital and they converted them to university buildings eventually. And on the street below, you can tell it's Sunday because on a normal day, it's full of people going back and forth to and from the main train station to the university. And I'm going out there now, on the way. Here we go, the door has mysteriously opened. And now we have to go down. We don't have an elevator here, so uh, you get lots of exercise just going up and down the four floors. And we have a two-story uh, two apartment, which is nice, but you know, keeps the legs nice and fresh. I won't take you all the way down, but you get the idea. Here we go, onto street level. A bit busy for a Sunday morning. A lot of tourists like to park along here because it's very central and easy to park and relatively cheap, you know, so they overnight here very often. And uh, yeah, pretty nice. There's part of the hospital, uh, the current hospital merged in with the old university buildings everywhere. And down the street, the portal uh, for the old walled city. These buildings here are all on the old wall of Lund, the, the center. And this is the this ring road here is uh, the site of the the ancient walls. This is part of where I usually go running. This was a very busy street until last winter, and they spent three years uh, constructing a, the new tramway, and we're very pleased with that. You can see we've gotten this uh, very long park right through the middle of town, with the grassy. Uh, uh, roadbed of the uh, uh, tramway tracks and so on and this is part of I don't know if I said that already but where I go running every day all along this out to the edges of town and um, and then looking up here another angle at the, at the church there's always someone around there was another guy over there filming this a lot of our Chinese tourists uh, not tourists well tourists but also students uh, love to take pictures of the church and of course, this is part of getting to know your town. This is the way down to the central station. And if you just pop in here, boink, you have a little shortcut. It goes past uh, the musical gymnasium or music high school here. And uh, all along here, I will be going down towards the tracks. Ja, hello there. Hette de faktis kultur school on the har. The yard, eh? Okay, tak så mycket, ja. Vi ses. Ja, kulturskolan, you know, the cultural school, it's called. More shortcuts here. Just zipping down, you know, I've got all my little roots here. My sister was visiting a few years ago and she kept getting lost because the town center, like I guess many of your English towns and elsewhere, is uh, from the medieval street plan. Uh, you know, it's, it's like a, a bicycle wheel, the spokes radiating out from the center and then all sorts of transversal connecting streets. And it takes a while to really learn how to avoid going in circles. My sister had developed the absolute longest possible way to get between two points and uh, was always amazed when I'd be shortening the time by about four fifths. Now here we are with the main rail tracks and Lund is going through a densification plan and uh, you know where every single spot that they can you know that's open space and whatever they're filling it up 
and these uh, this was old you know railway yards here which they're where they built new municipal buildings this brown one over here copper uh, is uh, the new courthouse and so on and the municipal building here extremely expensive and in typical Swedish total planning they've built all these uh, it's sort of mixed so that there's uh, housing and shops mixed in as well and now a pedestrian viaduct over the tracks here this is the main line between Copenhagen, Copenhagen Airport and Stockholm about uh, 650 kilometers and then going all the way up to the north of Sweden uh, to the northern border with Norway up to Nar Narvik into the high Arctic and so on. I have to walk pretty quickly uh, this morning because I want to do my mission here and get back home in time uh, because I have to uh, teach a course this afternoon, in an introduction to Zen meditation, which will take most of the afternoon. And it's sort of part of my contribution to the community, as it were, giving back to the system. Got to get my finger out of the picture there. Eh? This is pretty amateur, as you can tell, or as I'm sure you're feeling, but I just wanted to shake up what was going on with my videos. And, feel better about the whole business and I'll also practice, train, you know, for what I'm going to be using later in my hiking coaching. Uh, very often I come by here and young people are using this as a skateboard uh, playground, well thought of. Yes, and conveniently there was a young lady showing off her talents. It's a perfect sight. And she thought it was okay that I filmed. You can say a hey to England. <laughs> to encourage biking, they've got these, uh, you know, pumps everywhere throughout town where you can uh, inflate your tires and... Uh, you know, they, these signposts that count the number of bicyclists that have gone by this spot this morning and so on. You know, just a little bit of consciousness raising and so on. Cool little things everywhere. I'd say pretty contem contemporary, typical Scandinavian, Nordic uh, planning. You know, all of the ramps for wheelchairs and facilities and illuminated bike paths and nice playgrounds and stuff. I'm looking for these um, automated uh, recycling stations where you put, it's all sorted. You just have little uh, posts like this and then your waste goes underground into a pneumatic system and then sometimes it's a conveyor belt that takes your, your recyclable materials. We don't call it trash, but the recyclable materials uh, to a central station where it then goes into containers and is trucked away. And this, this area is one of the new areas that has that, but <clears throat> at the moment, I'm not bumping into any of that. So um, I'll keep my eyes open. I, um, I don't have so much time today, but I decided to walk anyway, both for the exercise and fresh air and feel good and do this video. And also, uh, you know, and I was gonna drive instead, but this is a lot of fun. Just some examples of the New Lund. It's a huge area. All this was just old warehouses and uh, parking lots and stuff. And yeah, industrial, old industrial, abandoned areas. And as you can see, Lund is famous for its bicycles. Bicycle. Hi there. Welcome to part two of the Swick expedition, the mystery mission to Lund's Antarctic. Uh, as any good documentary and even a bad documentary such as this one does. I've uh, stopped here for a second to give you a bit of the local color. Uh, this is uh, called Pulsamanen and it's very typical of Swedes. They're so interested in the exotic so from across the water you can come in and get your brilliant red sausage, your hot dog, and uh, consume it here. Here's a cool thing with this camera. Watch this. 
There I switched it from selfie view right in the middle of filming. And here's the little kiosk, the little trailer. Of course you have these all over Europe and the rest of the world, but this is a local variety. And uh, there we go. And here's the, uh, the ostensible goal of this mission, although many other goals are being achieved. It's a typical electronic superstore media market. I'm going to do this cool little thing again. Right, there it is, right in the middle of filming. I'm just going to mosey on in here. I don't have much time, just a few minutes. We'll see what the staff can help me with. And, uh, oh, I can smell the sausages there, the hot dogs, those brilliant red hot dogs. Oh, it's so appetizing. Red is urgency, right? They've taken fast food all the way, to use Rick Bragg's term. Uh, those are urgent hot dogs. you got to have them. So anyway, um, here we are, and this is your typical yeah, electronics uh, superstore. By the way, this is day 62 now. I had to uh, break up my expedition video into two parts because, uh, announced to me as I was walking, the fact that I'm all thumbs in this newbie beginner phase of doing videos was literally true. My thumb turned off the video and so I had to start again. I solved the problem in typical, highly innovative Swick fashion by deciding to do part two. Oops, that helps to go into the exit. So uh, here we go. In Gong. There we go. Those thumbs got in the way again, so uh, they uh, shut down part two. This will be part three. I might be able to find some time today to clip them together as my first video project. Uh, I'm just waiting for uh, somebody here to help me. But you can see it's your typical monster store. Millions and millions and millions and millions of crowns of products everywhere. Okay, see you in a few minutes. What's I do? Give me the mic. Yo, no, I'm in Bardane. Hurry, I can show up there. Ah, how you do you that? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Okay, on the way. Product in hand. Yesterday, I didn't know I was going to do this, and especially not last night was lying in bed tossing and turning. I was so disturbed about uh, the situation yesterday and how I was going to save it and all of that. So I just uh, woke up this morning no knowing what I was going to do. Okay. Now I just have to get back quick just used up the time you know in typical fashion uh, the guy that was going to help me I wanted to have a tiny little interview of him uh, you know just seeing telling him what I was doing and why I was doing this and all of that but he had to go ask his boss and then his boss said no their policy was that uh, they didn't allow such things so that was the end of that but I'll explain uh, later uh, you know well the main thing is I thought I was going to be using a mini iPad which is about uh, one of the first generation, I don't know, eight or nine years old, I thought I would be using that for my um, uh, teleprompter screen. And I tried uh, setting it up yesterday and nothing was working. I couldn't download apps. It was too old. It wouldn't, it wouldn't even sell me uh, apps that would work with it. So, you know, there's always a new twist, but I'm really learning how to innovate quickly and solve problems quickly. That's what SWIC is pushing me to. And it's another of the good things about the program solve problems fast, make them work, and I know this will work. But now I've got to get home, now. So I'll say goodbye for today, and we'll see what this ends up being. Thanks for watching and putting up with uh, <laughs> the, the strange quality. Bye-bye.